Okay, we've got some guys asking uh, about bumping the shoulder back on uh, on your brass when you're reloading, uh, rather than full length sizing. Uh, I try not to full length size if I can help it, just because it really puts a lot of stress on the on the brass down here closer to the base. I'll tell you what I've learned to do, and I'm using my own trick. I'll take a shell holder, in this case I'm working with a 204 case. Uh, this is a Hornady 204 brass. I take my number four shell holder, in fact it's the one for the 204. The number 10 shell holder will also work. One's for a 223, one's for a 204. Either one will work. And I've used both of these in this trick and I get the exact same measurement. So as long as you're using the lead shell holders, I guess it'll, it, it'll work. Now it won't work, this works for a 204, and you'll see what I'm doing here in a minute. This works for a 204, also works for a 223, you could put it over that case, and it reaches down there and meshes up, it gets right on the edge, outer edge of the shoulder here. Here's a 22-250, it works for that too. Here's a 243, no go, it won't go far enough. It won't fit down to the shoulder, so a 243 is too big for this trick, for these shell holders. If, if you have something else, that it will work. Here's a 22, 250. It's not all the way out on the very outer edge of the shoulder like I would like it, but I, I mean, it's still, it's probably right about the middle of the shoulder, which will still give you a, a reading. But for a 223, it works perfect, and for a 204, it works perfect. I mean, it is right where you want it on the 204. But what I do, before I start doing this, of course, first thing I want to do is knock these primers out. These are uh, used primers. Well, they, they get a little burr on them from the firing pin. These are pretty hot loads that I'm shooting in mine, so the primers tend to flow around the firing pin a little bit. So what I do is I'll just take the, my neck sizer first. Just a neck sizer, and I'm not really worried about sizing the neck at all because that's going to get done in this process. So what I'm going to do first is just I'm going to get the primer out of there because that's going to interfere with our measurement. I got a few here to show y'all, so we're going to go ahead and knock these primers out right quick. Okay, there's just five shells. And what we're going to do, we want to know ultimately uh, when you're reloading consistency. The key to consistency is consistency. And the, the brass, your cases are a very, very, very vital role, have a very vital role in that process. So I take the, this case here is a number four shell holder. You can use the number 10. You may have another shell holder that works, that fits another, anything, I think any shell holder. These are Lee, here's one for a 22-250. Exact same thing. Any Lee shell holder will work. You're limited on the caliber size because of the diameter of this hole, but it works for this. It works great for 223. Uh, so here's a 22-250 case hold, shell holder, a number two. Anyway, I'm using a number four right here. Primer's out. I put the shell holder over the top of the case. It sits right on the shoulder, just perfect. If you look underneath here, on the bottom side, there is a there is a chamfered edge. There's a tapered hole, a cone-shaped hole that meshes up. I mean, it meshes perfectly. I don't think that was their intention, but but it did. It worked out great. So you get your caliper. Now that primer's gone, so we don't have anything to to change up our, our measurement. Push it down, look at it from this side, make sure everything's level and straight. I'm at 2.0485. That's my reading. I know because I do this, I reload for this gun a lot. I want my brass, this measurement, I want this brass at 2.044 exactly. That's where I want it. And when I do all of my brass that way, that gives me the internal volume in this case stays identical all the way through those through all the cases. 
And like I said, consistency is the key to consistency. If you can get all of these the same, that's, that's, that's one more notch in their belt. So what we want to do, we're through with this. We don't, we're through with this neck sizer. Although I just sized these necks, knocking these primers out. It doesn't, you don't have to do that. You can take primers out any way you want to. I just get them out because it's easier for the measurement. And then I'm going to get my full length sizer. And we're going to screw it down. We're not going to go all the way. We're going to back it up a little bit. You're going to want to use a little bit of lube. You're not going to need much. I just don't want to take a chance on getting a case stuck in there again. So I'm using Hornady Unique case lube. Best case lube I believe I've ever used. Put a little bit on here. You want it to feel lubed. You don't want it to look lubed. You want it to feel lubed. It's, I'm trying to tell you how much to put on there. Just very little. So we got the, our full length sizing die backed up. It's backed out of there. We got a dog over here. Come on, Dan. Come over here. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna push that up inside. Give it. Push it all the way. We're gonna take it out and we're gonna measure again. I don't think I even hit the shoulder. No, I did not. A 2.0485. 2.0485. I didn't even touch the shoulder. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna go down a little bit more. I still don't think I touched it. No, I did not. So you're gonna keep going. Turn it in another quarter turn. Still had hit it. We're gonna go down another quarter turn. Try to bottom the ram out because that is a repeatable. That's something you can repeat every time. If you have to go so far down and then you have to guess if am I going the same distance as I went last time, or am I going the same amount of pressure as I did last time? Don't worry about that. Bottom the ram out and then you know. You you know you're going the exact same. Consistency. I still haven't touched the shoulder yet. You don't necessarily have to keep putting lube. I'm going to keep on. I mean, and I'm just putting a real thin, thin layer. We'll go another quarter turn or so. Starting to get a little tighter. I might be reaching the shoulder now. Yep, I went, it's 2.047 and a half. I went 1,000. And what I'm doing, all I'm doing is I'm pushing this shoulder down. I'm I'm collapsing this case a little bit over the time. This case has been fired, I don't know how many times, probably 15 or 18 times. So it's, it's the internal, the, the brass is stretched. Uh, I'm just getting on the shoulder and I'm just pushing it down. I'm collapsing that case until I get it to the right measurement. And then when you do that, you do them all exactly the same, then your internal volume on the case is the same. I'm at 2.045 now. And again, look at it this way and make sure you're, everything's parallel and perpendicular. I'm at 2.045. I need to go one more thousand. I'm going to turn that just a hair. Give it a good squeeze. Put that shell holder back on there. I'm at 2.0435. 2.0435. So that means I got that one. I'm going to allow myself five ten thousandths. Uh, I won't allow more than that though. So that one's done. And then what we do, just to be sure, I'll back it up just to make sure we have to, you know, it may not, may not be set right for that case or for this case. Back it up a little bit, give it a little squeeze. This one was a little long to start with. 2 point, yeah. 2.044, that's right where I want it. And 2.044, that, that gives 
that's what I tested with when I did my load development. And I've got it shooting, you know, it, it, the gun's shooting a quarter minute of angle now. And I shot four shots through a chronograph, the recipe that I'm using. I've got them shooting. Detective Rick Duggan is working the model of Michael Hudson. See that one? Yeah, 2.0445. There's that one. I shot them through the chronograph, and in order, the bullet speed was 3767, 3767, 3766, and 3767. That's pretty consistent. If you can get one feet per second change across the board, so I didn't quite bump that one far enough. And I didn't adjust it. I just give it a little bit more, a little bit more push on the on the ram. 2.0445 right there. And here I'm going to measure it ahead of time, so we can see what we're changing. There's 2.047 before. I like to turn the case 180 degrees just to try to, in case there's any kind of, you know, concentricity issues. Maybe if you turn it 180 degrees, maybe you'll split that and counteract that. 2.044. That's what I want it to be. Now, you don't have to full length size this. If you full length size it according to the way they tell you to adjust the die, what have you, then you're going to go back to factory specs. So I don't want this brass at factory specs. I wanted it 2.044 inches because that's what I tested. That's what gave me the, cut, the, the consistency in the groups. When I'm shooting a quarter inch group at 100 yards, everything's identical. And it starts with this. It's, it's, it's like using a, a, a bullet comparator when you're measuring the, the overall length. You're measuring on a piece of the, on the, piece of the bullet that that doesn't vary like the ballistic tip would or a soft point. Anything on the tip can vary five or six or even eight thousand. But you measure down there as the on the taper part of the bullet and, and you get a more accurate reading. That's the same thing as what we're doing here. You know, and some people say, well if you if you need you can't you just measure the brass overall length. Well yeah you can but sometimes that varies between the tip of the brass in that shoulder that that part can be different so I don't go by that I want to go by the shoulder itself when I get through with that now that I've resized these down I bumped the shoulder back that's what we call bumping the shoulder that's what that's what I was taught we bump the shoulder back we got that to where we want now we measure the overall length of the brass and I'm at 1.842 I'm, I'll have to look it up to see what I'm supposed to be. But you got that. We know the shoulders are all the same. Here's 1.841. 1.841 again. This brass should be fairly uniform. 1.848. Even though the shoulder, we just measured that. We've, we've got it right here. Even though from the, from the edge of the shoulder to the base, is the same as all these others. Now here we are, seven thousandths difference on the overall length. That's when the that's when the trimmer comes in. We we'll put it over here on the trimmer, trim it down to a length that gets them all the same. That gives us equal neck tension, you know, and the, the amount of distance that bullet has to travel before it is completely released by the case. When the case is no longer causing any any drag on it. You get all that the same, and every little step you do to make everything. See, this is 1.853. So even though we've got all the cases uniform from the shoulder to the base, they're all identical. Yet we have different overall lengths on the whole entire case itself. We put it in the case trimmer, set it, adjust it to where we're going to go to the shortest one, trim them all down to the shortest one, and then now all that's consistent. So then you would have the case volume internally is the same, the distance the bullet has to travel before the case completely releases it is the same. You use your comparator when you seat the bullet 
and you get all them identically the same. Your powder charge that you're weighing out, you get it identical. Everything's consistent on that powder charge. The overall length from the from the base to the to the O O job of the bullet. All oh, that's the same. Your shoulder to the base is the same. Your internal volume's the same. Everything is consistent. And then when you're shooting down range, your your target will reflect that. Everything will be consistent on the target. If you've done your load development, you know if you're shooting a load that's got the harmonics all screwed up and you're slinging bullets down there sideways, then all of this won't work. You have to do your load development at the same time. Get your powder charge right, the powder charge that, that works the best in your gun. And then go through this step each time, you know, and in the middle of all this is when you would, you would do your annealing too. You want to anneal your brass after, you know, some people do it after every five firings. I, I do it after every three. Um, some people do it every time. You know, it just depends on what you want to do. But this is when you would do that while you're doing all this case work. Uh, maybe that clears up any questions anybody had, but that's the way I do it. That's my trick. And, you know, it's, it's giving me a quarter minute of angle or better on my on my targets down range. I do it with a 204. I do it with a 22, 250. I do it with a 223. And all of this is done in the case in the low development and in just the reloading to replenish the, the ammo. I do this and it all, you know, it all it, it pays pays off in the end because you're shooting at these incredible groups and, and you know it's really nice when you're 300, 400 yards and you're shooting Dr Pepper bottles full of water or you know pill bottles full of tannerite and you're hitting it every time. You know. It's a little rewarding and a little satisfaction knowing that you went through the extra work and time here to make it do that. You know, it's doing that because you did your job. So, but that's how I do it. Any of y'all had any questions on how I bump the shoulders back? That's just a little trick of the trade. Took a shell holder, put it on the shoulder, and it rests just right. Now, of course, you're limited on the calibers you can use, but you can use this same trick. Find you something else that works. Uh, that works for these smaller calibers, and that's all I shoot is the small calibers. 22, 250, 243 is the biggest I'll shoot. I don't even, and I don't, I don't shoot it much. But the 22, 250, and the 204 are what I shoot all the time. My girlfriend shoots a 223. She has incredibly accurate, accurate ammo. Hers does the same as what mine does, and you know she shoots her 223 right alongside of my 22, 250, and. You know, I, I can't run off and leave her, and she can't run off and leave me, but, but we're dead even. And it's because we both reload our own ammo. She goes through the same processes that we do, that I do. Everything's done exactly the same, and, and that's why. That's why it does that. So uh, hopefully that cleared it up. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, find, us on, uh, find me on Facebook. I created a group, 204 Ruger Room. You can find us there. Uh, hit me up here on YouTube, anything you want to do. Got any questions? Let me know.